One of the hardest ingredients from the store to transition your family off of is bread. Today I'm going to show you the sourdough recipe that I committed to for my family more than four years ago and we're still eating it today. You can do it even when you're busy and it's a perfect beginner recipe. This one does assume that you have a sourdough starter already ready. So if you don't, let me know and leave me a comment and I'll teach you how to make one of those too. We're cooking from the book Artisan Sourdough Made Simple by Emily Rafa, and we're making her country farmhouse white loaf. It's my favorite. Next, you are gonna need a scale like this. This is my OXO, and it has a pull-out face. It's a wonderful, wonderful scale. I'm gonna leave you a link to that scale and the book in the description box so you can find that. Next, you need your sourdough starter. So if you haven't made one, mine's way up here. It's doubled and healthy and strong, but if you've never made one, let me know, and we'll do that. You need 65 grams of a really good bubbly active starter here. Then you're gonna go in with 300 grams total of liquid. I'm using 200 grams of warmed up buttermilk and then 100 grams of warm water. Now always make sure your water is unchlorinated or filtered or that you've let it sit out long enough that the chlorine has evaporated before you use it. And then you'll notice here that my starter is floating on top of the water. That's what it should always be doing. So make sure yours is strong and steady there. Then we're going to add a little sugar, just 12 grams or one tablespoon. I will leave you all the conversion measurements in the description box. We're going in with avocado oil next, about 15 grams of that, and then bread flour. 400 grams of bread flour in this particular recipe, and then 100 grams of all-purpose flour will go in next. So we're doing a little bit of a blend, both for structure and for softness. So I'm using that handy, lovely scale. Get a little too much, just take it on out, won't hurt a thing. And my scale is telling me exactly how much I have and I don't have to get out a bunch of mixing bowls. Then we're going in with sea salt next, nine grams or about one and a half teaspoons of salt. You do need salt in this recipe, it's very, very important. And I put that on with the flour so that it doesn't get into my starter directly. So leaving it there, you just blend it in with your hands loosely into the flour first. Then we can get rid of our scale and use a spoon to just gently bring everything together. Now. Sometimes that buttermilk is a little bit thick. It doesn't convert quite like water does. So you may find that you need a little extra water in there. And I'm just gonna put in a couple of tablespoons, maybe 15 or 20 grams if we were gonna weigh it and just kind of help things come together the rest of the way. This dough is going to be quite shaggy in the beginning and I'm gonna to switch to my, my bowl scraper. These are so handy, especially if you have weak hands like I do sometimes. And I'm just gonna bring the dough together. A lot of sourdough recipes do a lot of folding and coming back every few minutes and doing that, and I'm just not. I don't do it. You can learn those recipes if you want to, but this recipe is gonna sit just like this, and it's gonna absorb some moisture for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you're gonna come back and you're gonna notice that as you begin to kind of knead it over on itself and fold it over on itself, that it's much softer. See how stretchy that is? Super stretchy and soft, and that's exactly what we wanna see. So we're gonna just bring it together a little bit more, work it around until it's kind of a cohesive ball. We're not gonna do any folding or extra traditional kneading. Put a little oil on it, pat that on to keep it from getting a crust, and then we're gonna cover it and we're gonna let it sit for 12 to 18 hours at room temperature. You can do this in the refrigerator, but it's about one o'clock in the afternoon when I film this, and I'm gonna leave this sitting until tomorrow morning. So we will see you a little bit later, and just let it trust the process and sit there. The next morning, it's about eight o'clock in the morning. Sorry about the light, but that's just how it is with sourdough. You can't get it perfect all the time. And we're gonna put this out and we're going to shape it and get it in our loaf pan. Once we get it in there, it's gonna do its second rise. So you'll notice that we're not putting tons of flour on here. And also pay attention to the dough. You see all these stringy looking parts of it back in there? That means that the dough has exhausted most of the gluten and it's in good shape for processing now or for shaping. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just flour my hands. I'm keeping very little on the board and I'm gonna get this loaf of bread kind of in its sausage shape, a little bit of a, of a rectangle and then kind of rolling it up. And I'm going to begin to tighten the surface of this. So I'm tucking my fingers under on the edges and then tucking the back end, almost like a football shape, but I'm putting my fingers behind all four, all of them back there, all four, and then tugging it toward myself. As you do this, it tightens that skin surface. If your fingers start to stick, only flour your hands because if you flour the board too much, the dough is gonna slide across it and you need it to kind of grab on in order to make the surface of the dough stretch. 
So my hands are sticking on the sides right there and I'm just gonna put this little flower on there and continue to pull that dough toward me, keeping my hands stationary and just dragging the dough. So you'll begin to see it starts to smooth out and I tuck my ends under if they feel like they're sticking out too much and I got a bubble. So just, if you see a big bubble, just pull it open a little bit. You don't have to really mess with them much, but that's what I do. And then continue to shape that. I'll pull on this, you know, several times. There's another bubble until I'm satisfied that it's smooth enough. And then we're gonna go into a nine by five loaf pan. And I always line mine in parchment paper. We're gonna cover it with a very damp tea towel. These are very loved in my kitchen. And we're gonna leave it here for six to eight hours or at least until it's doubled in size. About eight hours have passed and the sun was getting dark on me. It was good, the sun was setting. So I wanted to hurry up and get this ready for the oven. You can see I've got a couple of air holes that have kind of popped up there and that's completely fine. Leave it covered and make sure that towel stays damp all day so it doesn't stick. We're gonna bake it at about 400 until you can use a thermometer on this if you'd like to you're looking for a temperature of about 180 to 200 degrees internally it's going to bake about 40 minutes i usually tent mine with foil halfway through to keep it from getting too dark then you can just lift it gently from the pan parchment paper makes all of this so much easier and allow the dough to cool or the bread to cool completely for one hour. If you don't, sometimes the texture inside can get a little bit gummy and sticky. So make sure that you leave it to have plenty of time to cool all the way through, even though I know it's hard. I want to show you on the side of this too. Uh oh, I have a crack. I have a crack on both sides on this loaf and that's a sign that I under rose it when it was in the loaf pan. So make sure that you're giving yours plenty of time. I was a little rushed on time. So make sure you give it plenty of time and you won't have a crack. Let's take a look at the inside, which is always wonderful after we've let it cool. And it's so soft, it has a really even crumb. And this bread will last on your counter for about three days. Um, but we keep ours in the freezer at all times and always just take out our slices from there and warm it up as we need it. There is so much to know about sourdough. I know this is just the beginning. So feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know what questions you have, what additional videos you'd like to see, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.